Good day, management, investor, and all participants online. I would like to welcome you all to Thai Union Group's second quarter year 2017 result announcement. Today, the executives who are joining us today are Mr. Jock Iri, the Thai Union Group CFO. Good evening. And Mr. Ludovic Garnier, Head of Group Accounting and Controlling. Good evening. And myself, Best Vianon Investor Relations Manager. This event will be comprised of approximately 30 to 40 minutes of presentation session, and then toward the end of the presentation, we'll provide the Q&A session of, all of approximately half an hour. Please do note that this conference session will be for any inquiry for our management. Please type in a question box on your right and click send. We will raise them during the Q&A session post the presentation. Now, uh, I would like to invite Mr. York Ari, Thai Union Group CFO, to start the briefing. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Kun Best, uh, and good evening uh, to everybody here in Asia. Good uh, afternoon in Europe, and uh, a, a very good morning uh, to anyone joining us from the Americas. I uh, would like to um, jump in for the key highlights for Q2 2017 um, earnings uh, for Thai Union. And please bear with me, the slides here are again uh, somewhat uh, slow. We jump right into the key data uh, and you see in the headline uh, some of the key focus areas that we, ha that we have. Number one, uh, of course, we continue uh, to work very closely with Red Lobster, support uh, uh, the operation, uh, and uh, continue um, to benefit from uh, favorability from our investment in the Red Lobster. And the second key focus area is cost control, and I will talk a little bit about cost control uh, a few minutes later. We have achieved 34.8 billion Thai baht uh, of revenue in Q2, that is plus 1.2 percent uh, compared to Q2 2017. It is a quarter with stable uh, growth year over year. Uh, we have marginally uh, marginally improved compared to Q2 16. If we eliminate FX translation effects our growth in real terms uh, on 2016 exchange rates was 4.5 percent. So I think given the headwinds we see from uh, raw material, and we'll talk about that shortly, um, and uh, currency fluctuations with the 1.2 percent, I think we show uh, quite uh, a strong and stable quarterly sales development. Gross profit margin with 4.7 billion uh, Thai baht, 13.4 percent of revenue. And I think uh, we all realize this is uh, the soft spot in our uh, P&L this quarter. Uh, again, after um, Q1 with a 14.5 percent lower gross profit um, than a year ago. Rising raw material prices uh, lead to substantial pressure on our gross profit performance um, in our Asian private label business, but also especially uh, in our European branded business, where we continue to have difficulties transferring all the cost increases from raw material to uh, consumer prices. The operating profit as a result has dropped. Uh, to 1.6 uh, billion year over year. It is now at 4.7% uh, of revenue, but it improved 85% compared to Q1-17. Uh, so I think we see uh, from a trend development uh, quite a strong and healthy uh, movement and uh, an ability to manage uh, cost in line with uh, suppressed gross margins. We have then uh, a couple of uh, good results below operating profit. We end the quarter at 1.411 billion Thai baht in net profit. That is only a slight reduction compared to a year ago. We're at 4.1 percent. 
uh, and all that despite the rising raw material prices and the overall headwind from a market environment. Uh, in the first half, our net profit actually increased by 4.4%. Uh, we improved our balance sheet. Uh, our revenue rose. Um, gross profit, as uh, we now presented uh, for a couple of quarters, uh, is under pressure. Operating profit, as a result, uh, is also down. EBITDA actually on more or less comparable level, 7% down, but net profit increased by 4.4%. And I think this is also a sign of very strong um, management of the whole P&L uh, below operating performance share price. Uh, this year until August 4th um, is more or less flat. Uh, we have returned to cash generation um, in the first half year and we've been able to reduce our net debt to equity from 1.37 to 1.33. We have returned to debt repayment and have improved our balance sheet um, uh, strength. The typical slide that we present uh, at this stage last uh, two years of quarterly performance, and I think what you can see here very nicely, number one, every quarter we are growing. I think that's a good sign. Uh, what you also see that starting Q3 2016, uh, we are facing substantial raw material price uh, issues, part of it we have been able to counterbalance. Part of it we were not able to counterbalance. But if you look since Q3-16, gross margin is actually quite um, uh, stable uh, in, the, in the quarterly development. The same with net profit performance. Even if you look back to Q2-2015, it is uh, in a well in the range between 4 and 5%. And I think given all the headwinds, this is quite uh, a strong and remarkable resilience against difficulties in the market environment. Uh, before we go a little bit more uh, into detail with financials, uh, I'd like to share some recent uh, developments. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we have uh, continued to stay in the FTSE for Good uh, Index for uh, good governance. We have affirmed our uh, credit rating from the Thai um, Credit Authority, and we remain on a double A minus with stable outlook. Uh, we have won with John West the award of Best UK's Canned Seafood Brand of the Year. Uh, we see strong collaboration with customers and now uh, even with Alibaba uh, in China, we've signed a, an agreement uh, to grow online business uh, through the Tmall platform in China uh, with products uh, that we are sourcing internationally but also from the US. And we have uh, several product innovations. We have launched and we are on shelf uh, with several MSC certified products in uh, Germany. In fact, in Germany, we're only selling MSC certified uh, products. Under Select, we've uh, launched a, a new Select Daily uh, range, and we have several other innovations with which we went to the market. On sustainability, uh, we have. Um, uh, started for our Thai brand Select, the so-called can tracker, so that consumers uh, can track uh, where is the fish caught uh, that is in the can. Um, and uh, this is giving further focus that also in a developing market like Thailand, uh, we are bringing in full steam our, cred our credibility as a supplier of sustainable uh, and um, products that are sustainable and that are environmentally uh, focused. We've also issued 
our sustainability report, um, uh, when was it, a couple of weeks ago? Um, about a month ago. Which is ready for download mm -hmm. on our website. A lot of people ask us on commercialization of our uh, uh, innovative products and uh, we have now successfully or officially launched our yellowfin tuna slice uh, which is a completely new format uh, in the market this will um, help uh, consumers uh, to improve their experience in seafood um, and we are launching it through our Chicken of the Sea brand via the food service channel across the US and you can see here uh, some pictures on uh, examples how to prepare and how to prepare good products uh, and good food uh, with our innovative tuna slices. We have this in various um, uh, flavors with black pepper uh, and with other uh, flavors attached. Um, on the sustainability side, we have uh, been able to reach an agreement after many, many years and months of discussion uh, with NGOs and also especially Greenpeace uh, and engaged Greenpeace in further uh, discussions and exchanges around sustainability and we've entered into a joint agreement in July uh, to commit to more sustainable socially responsible seafood building on our company's sustainability stra uh, strategy under the Sea Change uh, platform. Sea Change is a platform we've put in place uh, last year as an umbrella uh, for Thai Union's overall sustainability program. And we're looking here, and this agreement includes uh, fair labor uh, arrangements around long lining, transparency at uh, sea, and uh, sustainable management of tuna stock, and a reduction of, fish of the use of fish aggregating devices. As you know, Thai Union is investing $90 million in the next years into sustainability, into sustainable seafood, and into sustainable tuna. And we believe uh, this is where consumers want us to go, want us to help the industry to go, uh, and want the industry to become uh, a real change uh, to where uh, and, and embrace um, labor, environment, and seafood stewardship. On Red Lobster front, uh, we'd like to share with you um, the recent uh, iconic events, uh, lunch and dinner time events, the Crab Fest, now there's a seafood, the Lobster and the Shrimp Fest, with uh, the slogan, take your favorite seafood, lobster, shrimp, and turn it into a summer on a plate. Um, and uh, we'd like to just share one uh, little uh, piece of how good the collaboration with Red Lobster goes and how the turnaround program for Red Lobster continues. This is showing the American Customer Satisfac Satisfaction Index score for Red Lobster restaurants from 2007 to 2017. And in the last three years, the company has had an astonishing turnaround and went up to 89, 81 uh, points uh, on the index score uh, and we are on track to uh, be again very well uh, acknowledged and seen by American consumers. Uh, for those of you who follow us and most of you do follow us uh, for several quarters in 2015. Um, we booked uh, an impairment on uh, the fishing fleet that we were operating in Ghana and we started the divestment process for this fishing fleet. Uh, we believe that focusing on canning operations and on commercial business and brand management 
uh, is where we want to focus our time and effort. And we said we want to actively step out of fleet operations. We have, with last week, divested the last of our boats. Uh, and we can now um, confirm that we have been able to execute this sale and divestment of the fishing fleet operations without any uh, financial uh, losses other than the impairments that we took in 2015 and we uh, were firm on our view that though that that hit in 2015 uh, was the only write down that we have to take so we've been quite successful in divesting here this fishing uh, operation uh, for those of us who are even longer with us uh, will probably note that 2017 uh, is the 40th year uh, the establishment uh, of uh, Thai Union um, is celebrated. So we have the 40th year anniversary celebration uh, and we will uh, do this together with customers, together with suppliers, together with uh, our investors. Um, and especially our employees who have supported us and who are driving the strength of the company forward and who are helping us to rise to the future. Uh, coming back to a little bit more financial uh, views and, and uh, I think also interesting for investors is what do we do with uh, our uh, dividend policy. We are we stick to our dividend policy to pay out at least 50% of our net income, and we have uh, kind of amended this uh, general um, rule of 50% uh, payout into saying we do not want to pay less dividend than in the prior year. So in the first half year. Uh, we have uh, remained on a, a payout ratio that is now 53%. We remain on uh, 32 setang uh, per share and we confirm that we want to um, remove the dividend stream volatility from our shareholders as much as we can uh, and uh, stay firm on our policy uh, to pay at least 50% uh, dividend to our shareholders uh, and try to increase or at least keep stable the dividend cash stream for shareholders. Our payment date uh, will be the 4th of September and the book closing date is the 23rd of August. XD is the 18th of August. And with this, I'd like to uh, jump a little bit more detailed into the financial performance. And we saw this slide already uh, last quarter uh, in uh, Q1, where we try to explain the headwinds that we are facing. And those headwinds are uh, true and are in place as we speak and getting worse uh, as we speak, as you will see in the tuna price development. There continues to be difficulty to pass on price increases to consumers. The competitive pressure uh, in the private label business is enormous and tuna volumes overall are under pressure. There is weak catch, increased sustainability and this is causing tuna prices to now go to a level of $2,000 and uh, that is where we can really see a direct impact on our in, in shrimp, prices have come off a little bit. Uh, competitive pressure and gross profit pressure in the U.S. still uh, remains high. Salmon prices had been quite high during Q2. Now we see uh, prices to drop again. I even heard people who said we may see trades done at 55 knot per kilo. Um, that would be good to see a normalization. But what we see in the salmon pricing is a, a very high chop, uh, volatility, 
very choppy uh, price development uh, week over week. Exchange rates uh, continue to be highly volatile. The U.S. dollar uh, continues its dive. Um, the Thai baht uh, appreciation, so we have a little bit of a stronger Thai baht now. Uh, on the one hand, it's good for our uh, currency uh, result and our hedging result. At the same time, it does hurt competitiveness of Thai export as an export driven company of course we do like um, that uh, uh, we are not having a, a too uh, strong um, Thai baht currency uh, as it affects directly the competitiveness of our exports uh, political dynamics I don't think I have to comment uh, a lot uh, about this uh, but this is a period where I think many companies um, are very happy for signs of stability. And this is exactly what we do not see in our tuna price development. This is the uh, price chart up until July. You see the last transacted prices, 1950 uh, in July. And here you can see how since Q316, Prices have gradually, quart this is the average price per quarter, have increased quarter, uh, quarter by quarter. Uh, and this is where we can see a substantial um, uh, pressure on our P&L. If you just look at 36% uh, year-over-year growth in May 16, and then you look at May 17, you have another 17.3%. Seven, uh, 17 so you have nearly uh, a doubling of uh, the tuna prices. Uh, that is a, a, a very uh, a severe pressure on pricing. And some customers and consumers find it difficult uh, to accept price adjustments uh, of uh, products in the tuna industry. Uh, some key takeaways for our results, our uh, Q2 results, resilient growth, I already talked about it, uh, weaker gross profit margin from high raw material prices, we talked about it, strong cost control, and this is maybe the most surprising uh, operational topic for many uh, uh, of, of you, uh, but I think when we announced end of Q1, that we will uh, take measures to bring SGNA cost well below 10% and that we will start on very strong cost uh, cut measures. Uh, this is now what we can uh, see as a result, minus 10% SGNA uh, compared to last year. We are a little bit below 9% of revenue. We are well below the 10% guidance. Um, and uh, we will continue to focus on structural cost changes in overhead activities and in back office functions. Um, I think we are very serious to uh, come to an equation where for reduction in gross profit margin, we also need to see uh, a respective reduction in SGNA cost in order to manage and reduce volatility of operating profit. Below OP, uh, I think uh, uh, we've, we've uh, commented on this before, uh, positive FX um, after a very strong FX gain in Q1, still positive in Q2, uh, significant tax uh, savings primarily from uh, our Red Lobster activities where we have the advantage of a very beneficial uh, tax structure in the US uh, and, a, and a very strong uh, performance of our Indian associates. Avanti is doing extremely well uh, and we are very very happy for our engagement with Avanti. Uh, continued uh, contribution from Red Lobster I think on average Again, 15%, 1 15%, 15% EPS accretion through uh, the investment in Red Lobster. I think this is now 
third quarter in a row that we have a clear and strong uh, support uh, from our investment. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on revenue growth and on the more detailed slides. I think Quinn Best will later on discuss uh, our key segments uh, a little bit more. So let me uh, move more or less quickly into um, uh, this is the revenue bridge uh, where you can see uh, actually quite a strong uh, growth but then we are depressed through currency effects uh, the structure around regions is uh, now in, in Q2 favoring uh, a little bit uh, the um, the Asian markets and the Asian regions uh, but the structure overall remains more or less uh, comparable also if we look at brand food service and private label uh, contribution gross margin uh, as I commented before minus 14 and a half percent but plus 7.8 percent uh, compared to Q1 uh, and I think for the first half year we have a 14 percent reduction in gross profit and that is what shows uh, the gross profit margin pressure that we see in our financials operating profit substantial improvement compared to q1 but a little bit down well quite a lot down compared to q2 16 um sgna and this is i think where a, a lot of you will have questions later on um focus on personal cost uh where we really go through one by one people rehiring staffing uh, uh, headcount buildup or even replacements in some areas to structurally help ourselves to improve the cost position. Admin cost control, uh, we have reduced marketing expenses in some of the markets where we are under pressure. Uh, we are renegotiating rental arrangements, energy cost savings, maintenance cost uh, uh, control and others. No area is untouched and we go into every single factory to address overhead costs. We go into every single commercial business to discuss about shared services, how can we pool activities, how can we help each other and take out cost from the system. EBITDA uh, is more or less stable, 7% down in the second half year, in the first half year to first half year 16 at 8.7 percent now uh, com relatively stable compared to Q1 uh, 17 um, and net income as discussed up 4.4 percent comparable to prior quarters and well in the range uh, above 4 percent EPS uh, uh, has been growing in the second half year, in the first half year 17 compared to first half 16 from 58 Satang to 60 Satang that is the plus 4.4 percent year over year this is just to illustrate again the um, contribution of Red Lobster and the several contribution buckets share of profit uh, in Q2, the business was more or less break-even, a little bit negative. Uh, our income from the convertible uh, structure that we have with Red Lobster, the dividend yield that we get from there, 259. Finance costs, 136, well below the interest charges that we pass on through the convertible. And then we have a very strong income tax uh, um, contribution in Q2. There are some uh, phasing effects between Q1 and Q2 to be considered, but we basically have a structure that is helping us to reduce our overall tax uh, bill for Thai Union. So we have a net income effect of 235 million uh, in Q2. 
that is um, an EPS uh, accretion, and I think here the percentages are the wrong way around of 20.3%. Cash flow is back up in the positive. We are now in Q2 at a cash conversion rate of 0.7. Uh, I think that's a good uh, uh, trend that we see in Q1 and Q2, steady improvement. Uh, we still need to work very, very hard to keep inventories in check uh, and to keep networking capital where it needs to be. We also need to watch out CapEx uh, going forward, but I think we are uh, here on a, a trend that is at least giving some sign of improvement. Uh, debt uh, financing structure and our long-term funding structure, I think pretty similar to uh, uh, Q1. 98% um, of uh, our debt is raised in Thai baht and then converted into the target currency uh, of use. So every Thai baht that we're taking up and that we put into a US dollar business is converted in the US dollar and hedged uh, up to maturity. Uh, we've been able to uh, extend uh, or move into a more long-term long -term profile of our debt structure and this gives us some security on the long-term uh, interest cost for the company. Uh, <clears throat> net debt bridge uh, of the company, we started the year at 64.9 uh, billion uh, of net debt uh, and we are ending it at slightly below that Q2 we're ending Q2 slightly below that uh, but all that given a strong dividend payout comparatively high capex uh, for the first half year which is slightly above uh, the typical run rate due to um, several projects uh, and we have a net debt to equity now of 1.33 uh, times compared to 1.37 at the end of December in uh, 2016. Um, working capital efficiency, return on equity is now at 13%, a little bit below. Inventory days have gone down slightly. Um, return on capital employed has dropped somewhat uh, due to the Red Lobster investment. Networking capital is improving again, net debt to equity uh, on a downward trend. Uh, and with this I'd like to give to Kun uh, uh, Best to share uh, just a few minutes the individual segment performance. And for the individual segment performance, uh, starting from the point that Jörg has been mentioning earlier about the raw material pricing, we continue to see the tuna price has been increasing steadily. So in uh, as of the second quarter, the average tuna price was at about 763 uh, 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 US dollars per ton, which is up 17% year on year and 8% quarter on quarter. And this took a toll on uh, our tuna, especially the ambient seafood business. While on the other hand, we con we have seen the shrimp price and salmon price, while it's still on the uptrend in the second quarter, the increase has been more mild, uh, and we have managed it to the reasonable degrees. Thus, we can co we will see that in the upcoming uh, slides about the gross profit margin in the frozen and shield seafood, which has uh, been gradually improving. For the exchange rate, uh, we continue to see the key currency uh, start to uh, continue to depreciate against Thai baht and as a result we have managed it and took the opportunity to convert it into the FX gains during the second quarter from the up from the uh, massive FX gain that we have already made during the first quarter of 590. Uh, we have recorded an additional of 40 million Thai baht uh, into FX gain during the second quarter. And on the top line sales, I mean, we have recorded the sales of 33, uh, 34 billion Thai baht sales and the consol consolidated sales growth during the second quarter of only 1.2% in Thai baht term or 4.0% in US dollars uh, term. I would like to break it down into the following three segment sales as follows. 
on the ambient seafood side uh, this is where we have seen uh, some hit uh, on year on year basis we have seen the sales have been declined uh, by 2.8 percent year on year to end at 16.4 billion Thai baht of sales during the second quarter of year 2017 uh, although I mean we have seen uh, we have seen the average selling price increase by 3.5 percent to reflect to reflect uh, some of the rising tuna costs uh, this is happened at the cost of the uh, sales volume has been under pressured by 5.7 percent but nonetheless we have seen the stable uh, gross profit margin of tuna business uh, it has been stay at about 15 percent in the second quarter of year 2017 compared to 16 percent of the first quarter year 2017 uh, here the rising tuna price uh, to 1900 US dollars by end June uh, put the pressure on both the branded and private label uh, profit margin on the frozen and chilled seafood uh, this is where we have continued to do well uh, on the uh, sale size the frozen and chilled seafood and related sales have been increased by six percent year on year and eight percent quarter on quarter to 14 billion thai baht uh, quantity wise have been continued to grow at eight percent year on year on gross profit margin as well uh, due to the uh, the fact that it's a shrimp and salmon price has become more stable of late uh, and uh, we have been able to increase our gross profit margin uh, to 9.6 percent which is up 132, uh, 132 basis point year on year uh, on the, and now we come to the last section in terms of the pet care business, uh, we continue to see sales growth of 2.2% year on year to 4.5 billion Thai baht as of the second quarter of year 2017, with quantity sales quantity continue to rise by 1.2%. And despite rising tuna price, the pet care value added and other businesses segment continue to deliver a solid 20% gross profit margin during the second quarter of this year. So in sum, uh, out of this first half revenue of 66.2 billion we have delivered uh, the gross profit margin of 13.6 percent and as a result the gross profit margin of 9 billion Thai baht during the first half of the year uh, and for the next section uh, we will move on to the business outlook uh, in which we will discuss the outlook of the company uh, I will hand uh, the, the, the stage back to Jörg mm -hmm. now Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Kun Best. Um, and uh, of course, um, this, the same question comes back uh, uh, over and over again. What about uh, the growth trajectory of the company? Will you achieve the eight billion? Uh, you make big words around the eight billion. Will you achieve it? And we've um, we've we've put together the the whole picture a little bit differently this time. To explain why, uh, from our perspective, uh, we believe the eight billion revenue target is something we feel extremely comfortable with, uh, and that we think that we can slowly uh, focus on other areas in our P and L in our uh, financial performance and. Uh, turn the P&L upside down and take uh, bottom line uh, improvement and bottom line performance as one of the key drivers for the company. And that is not because we walk away from our 8 billion, but because we feel that the 8 billion is something that is very achievable. We have now in 2016, and this is uh, uh, just a chart to illustrate where we stand today uh, we used 2016 as a starting point we had 3.8 billion us dollars in uh in revenue we will uh, of course exceed that uh, uh, this year um uh, but we also own uh financial or, or commercial interests in red lobster of 25 percent equity and and 24 percent uh, convertible interest which we can convert any time in 49% uh, equity ownership uh, in case we wish to do so 
so if we uh, just for a moment consider uh, Red Lobster is already part of Thai Union, uh, Thai Union's reach of business and in our overall global portfolio uh, with a revenue contribution of 2.5 billion US dollars, then already today uh, we are having a strategic reach uh, and a management reach uh, into uh, a business volume of 6.3 billion. If we then add on top of this, uh, and if you recall, uh, our aspiration is double GDP growth uh, for our organic business. If we add organic growth, if we add the uh, substantial contribution from emerging markets, China, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, uh, if we look at the marine ingredients, our fish oil activities, uh, where we want to exceed $100 million in revenue and, and uh, a very strong profit contribution. And if we then look at our food service business that is planned to contribute substantial uh, to our top line, I think uh, at least for me and for my colleagues uh, in the global leadership team, we feel rather confident that the $8 billion is something we can um, achieve. Uh, for mm -hmm. the strategic reach of Thai Union and the business that we are invested in. So with this, uh, we still need to focus on growth and we will continue to focus on growth and to get double GDP organic and we do be strong in emerging markets, get the rollout of the oil uh, business and uh, be stronger in the food service channel. But with this, uh, we are uh, putting much more focus in the next coming quarters and years on a, profit uh, on a profitability focused organization. And some of these things we've discussed uh, already in prior quarters, but just to put this into perspective, this is not new. This is something which we, with which we have started the year. and which was at the top of our mind uh, already uh, when we entered into this very difficult year from a raw material perspective. Focus on operational improvements, cost management, contribute uh, uh, to profitability from all our businesses, bring chicken of the sea in the US back into the growth zone, the profit contribution zone, uh, and to make our European salmon business uh, profitable this year, uh, which at least for the third quarter in a row, we are already um, gross margin positive, not OP positive, but at least we have a gross positive gross margin. We want to focus more on post-merger integration and on how we can uh, leverage the growth through Red Lobster, collaborate more with the businesses that we have purchased and execute all the uh, synergies that we have planned for in our acquisition strategies. We said we want to divest the loss-making fishing fleet business, which we have uh, done. Uh, we have sold all our boats and we uh, have divested this in uh, line with our plans. We want to focus on the new businesses, bringing Oscar into a global brand, focus on innovation, uh, accelerate commercialization efforts, uh, both in products and in process initiatives, and make sea, food, uh, make sea change and our commitments to sustainability uh, differentiator in the industry. So I think the page before where we explain how to get to 8 billion and that the gap to 8 billion may in fact not be as large as uh, it would seem considering our strong involvement and engagement in Red Lobster allows us into moving towards a profitability focused, a know-how capability and margin focused organization. And with this, uh, I think we are on the second step into our path for the 8 billion and that is looking at gross margin accretion 
and net profit improvement to come to the targets and to the accretion improvement objectives that we have set. Uh, and with this, we are at the end of uh, the presentation slides. Um, and I'm inviting uh, to ask questions. Some of the questions we already have. I don't know, Ludovic, do you want to? Yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm uh, going to start. Um, okay. Jörg, we have quite a lot of questions regarding Red Lobster. Um, so maybe we can get back to, we have a specific slide on this one, just to help you to understand. So this is quite a big component. So, this is three. so the first question is, is Red Lobster making any profit or equity income contribution? Um, so you will see that for this quarter, as Jörg said, yeah, Red Lobster is doing a, s a small loss by $49 million uh, for this quarter. As we explained, Red Lobster business is highly seasonal. Uh, uh, the Q1 was very profitable and Q2 uh, is a slight loss making on, on this one. We have a related question, which is on the tax. Uh, and yes, indeed, on this quarter, taxes are, are really low. Uh, the tax credit coming from Red Lobster is amounting to 160 million baht. Out of this one, we, we guess that half of this one is not near recurring. As Jörg said, we have a very positive tax structuring regarding Red Lobster in the US. Um, we have some goodwill depreciation, and we have also some interest income not fully taxed. So we have a lot of tax positive coming from this one, and especially this quarter. So for this quarter, the amount of the tax credit on Red Lobster is 160, and half of this one is considered to be non-recurring. OK, let's uh, uh, jump to some other questions. Of course, one of the first questions, SG&A, um, is this recurring? Uh, what can we expect, I guess, the uh, effects in Q2 uh, are probably a, a little bit stronger than what I would feel comfortable committing for the second half. So I would think we will probably uh, return back in the second half to something between 9 and 9.5% nine and uh, of revenue, mm -hmm. but very clearly below 10%. Um, uh, I think the uh, cost cuts that we put in place uh, are, on the one hand, short-term uh, reductions of marketing expenses. This will uh, certainly return back to normal at one stage. Uh, but what we are focusing much more on is to look into structural reductions in back office functions, focus on shared services, uh, and focus on delayering the organization uh, with uh, pooling of activities, uh, synergizing between entities, mm -hmm. and um, taking out overhead cost uh, where we feel they're either duplicated or where we can build more efficient uh, service and support structures for the commercial and the operating um, business. We had some, some question on the components of the other income. So on this quarter, the other income amounts to a bit more 400 million baht. Uh, the, the main part of this one is the interest income and mainly coming from Red Lobster, uh, which is amounting to 240 million baht. And we have also a bit of different stuff uh, like, tax, like tax coupons or other income coming from our various subsidiaries. But the main part is really the interest income coming from Red Lobster. Uh, just read a question on revenue. Uh, weak revenue growth despite surging tuna price, why the price adjustment is so weak. I think this is, a, this is, the, uh, this is basically the root cause of the current challenges th that we have in our, in our gross margin. Um, we see a, a substantial price pressure in the private label business. We do not understand uh, yet how this price pressure and cost pressure can be sustainable for many of the packers. Um, but we also see, and that is much worse, I guess for us, that in some of the key markets uh, that we operate in, 
Um, for example, in France, uh, there is a very, very strong pushback to price increases. Uh, we went through uh, the yearly price negotiations earlier this year, um, and uh, it proved very, very difficult to get uh, price increases through to consumers and to customers. Uh, so this is very difficult in the UK. There is a, 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 a double effect. One is price increases from raw material, but the second and, and equally bad is price increases from inflation. The British pound uh, dropped by 20-25% compared to a year ago, and uh, this together with the raw material cost increases lead to a situation where we cannot recover 100% from customers and from consumers. So I think there is a, a real perfect storm uh, from currencies, from raw material, from very, very strong pushback from customers and uh, a competition in the private label space that for us uh, uh, is very difficult to understand. Um, and we can only uh, hope that uh, the channel stock of inventory that some people may have at lower cost is uh, quickly depleted and prices return back to normal. We have also some questions regarding tax and how much can the union save in terms of tax for this year. Um, so what we can see, uh, as you can see, our tax are quite volatile quarter after quarter. Overall, we have some good news, um, many from Europe, where we can observe that there, there, is, there are some tax rate decrease. So overall, at the end, on the full year basis, we should be slightly below the guidance. We are also helped by the Red Lobster impact on this one. Um, and we are also benefiting from the fact that our, the, the, the countries where we pay the most of the taxes, like such as Europe, um, are the one where we are performing very well this year. So, of course, the impact on the taxes is balancing the decrease of the OP. Uh, several questions around uh, new guidance for sales, growth, gross margin, SG and A. Uh, I guess it's clear on the gross margin, the, the earlier guidance of lower range, 15 to 16 percent, I think that one uh, with the Q1 result was already very hard to achieve. I think there we will see challenges. This will be counterbalanced by substantially lower SG&A cost. Uh, so I would say uh, we're not ready to provide an entirely new guidance, but I don't think you should expect uh, gross margins to now leapfrog to bring us above 15%. I think that would be rather unrealistic. I'm sure the analysts among us have already not anticipated that. So uh, uh, I guess uh, we will see some improvement in Q3 uh, and uh, that will help us, uh, but I don't think we will uh, get back to a 15 to 16 percent range in this year. Of course, this is the long-term target to get back there and then exceed 16, but uh, I think for this year we also need to be realistic. I think many of us, uh, many of the analysts and the analyst reports have a relatively realistic view on uh, gross margin uh, uh, expectations for the remainder of the year. SG&A, as I mentioned, will stay well below 10, probably somewhere between 9, 9.5, um, and sales growth, I think we will see uh, Q3 and Q4 uh, to uh, come back to a stronger growth. A lot depends, of course, on currency. If you eliminate FX uh, translation effects, we are actually uh, growing quite well. Um, but with the depression of, of tuna volumes and headwinds, especially from US dollar uh, and British pound, uh, I think uh, we will still continue uh, to grow well. Uh, will it be the 7-8% that we guided earlier on in Q1 or will it uh, be a tick below that? Uh, we will need to see how the next uh, months um, go, but growth is uh, still on the cards and will be still uh, quite 
uh, quite okay. Uh, and let me at that stage also comment on the tuna price. Look, uh, I, I guess many people who tried to forecast the tuna price in the last one year were wrong quarter on quarter and month on month. So I really do not want to make a prediction here. I don't think there is a, a clear view yet. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that there are not many assumptions that prices will very sharply drop. Uh, of course, prices should normalize at one stage. Will that be in Q3, in Q4? Um, or Q1 next year, we need to see. Uh, but I don't think there are a lot of signs of a fast softening of tuna prices. Um, I, I think there could be transactions made on $2,000 or maybe slightly above. Mm -hmm. uh, is it healthy? Absolutely not. Uh, not for consumers, not for packers. Um, but I think we will need to see how this develops. Uh, I, I wouldn't expect for Q3 a substantial drop in in prices. I mean, that's for sure. We have some, some questions also regarding Avanti. Uh, so just to remind you, Avanti is our affiliate, which is listed in India. So as it is a listed company, we don't communicate specifically on uh, on, on this one. Yeah, we we give this uh, question to our colleague Indra uh, uh, in in India, the CEO and uh, uh, founder of uh, Avanti. He will uh, for sure be able to give comments on their performance and outlook. For us, this is a great investment. Performance was fantastic, uh, but I think uh, with regards to investor uh, communication, we really would like to defer to. Uh, the meetings uh, uh, that Avanti has. Yeah, and then what is the expected sales contribution from the first innovative product, Supernova, in 2017? We already sold uh, initial quantities. I don't think we should expect here a substantial volume and revenue contribution. Uh, it is in uh, some of the food service channels in the US. We are planning to launch uh, it also in the UK uh, this year, so we will see some uh, revenue contribution. We shouldn't expect to this to be uh, uh, enormous or uh, a game changing for 17, but we will plan and we are planning for a sequential improvement of volumes and a very healthy growth of uh, this business. Uh, in the food service channel. All right, and that's how uh, we have no further question from the floor. And do for the sake of time, we have been uh, finished it right on time. So uh, this concludes the live webcast for the Thai Union Group uh, second quarter year 2017 result announcement today. Thank you very much for your time, interest in participating the event today. Uh, if you have any further inquiry, please feel free to contact our IR department anytime during the office hours. I wish you have a good day and thank you very much. Thank you, thank uh, you. and have a great evening. Thank you. Goodbye.